It was around this time, when Renoir was 25 years old, that he painted this work, the inn at Mar Antony. On the surface, this painting shows a lively scene at a rural tavern that Renoir and his friends often visited. But there is much more lurking beneath that surface. The Salon was the annual art competition sponsored by the state, sponsored by France. And it was the most important challenge for a young artist who wanted to make his career. It was where he could be seen by the most people and get clients, basically, after that. It was also a very judgmental and uh, fairly conservative body of judges called the jury that um, they would submit, artists would submit their works to the jury. And depending upon how academic their work was and how it was appropriate for certain standards, they could be accepted. Renoir had submitted several paintings to the Salon, and his work had largely been rejected, as it would be for some years. This painting serves as a somewhat clever statement in protest of that institution. We see Renoir's friend, Alfred Seasley, in the hat, while another friend, Jules Lecour, rolls a cigarette. But this work also pays homage to two other painters of the time who had, like Renoir, also been rejected by the Salon. The composition, mood, and scale of the work owes its debt to Gustave Courbet, while the use of black, gray, and brilliant white is in honor of Edouard Manet. And the newspaper we see on the table is La Even Mon, or The Event. Its significance is that in this paper, the writer Emil Zola had not long before published a controversial statement that harshly criticized the Salon and called for a new definition of art. And in 1873, he decided the time had really come to make his mark, and so he paints this big, ambitious picture of a fashionable woman riding this wonderful steed and a young boy beside her on another horse. He hopes, clearly, that this will be shown in the Salon, and because of its sheer physical scale, will attract the attention of Salon goers and ultimately, hopefully, gain him commissions, because this sort of advertised his abilities to do large, fashionable portrait paintings. It's an important painting on a lot of levels. It's important within his career. It's his first real attempt to make it into the Salon with a large scale, very ambitious painting of an equestrian subject, a woman on horseback, a young boy on horseback. So it goes back to this tradition of fashionable painting. On the other hand, it's, um, it's sort of a tour de force. On one hand, the painting is traditional in the subject matter and also the way the horses are painted. But in the background, you can already see that he's been studying out of doors with Monet, that there's light coming into that landscape. So it has this sort of disjunctive quality to it where you see the horses who are very traditionally painted. And then you look backwards and you see this very uh, hazy landscape that we associate with high impressionism. So it's sort of a turning point because he did it for a reason. He did it to garner clients. Unfortunately, the jury uh, did not respond well to this picture. They rejected it. And Renoir, at that point, had had enough. He put so much into this painting of his hopes and dreams that this was the turning point that when it was rejected, he also decided to abandon the ambition to be a salon painter, to get accepted by the jury. And he threw himself wholeheartedly in with the group that became known as the Impressions. He had been submitting to the Salon for a number of years by then. He had had it, and that summer he goes to Argenteuil on the Seine outside of Paris and paints side by side during the summer with Monet and moves his art very self-consciously and willfully in a different direction. Monet played a significant role in Renoir's life. He, was, he met Renoir at art school, and it was Monet who literally tutored Renoir in the art of painting out of doors. One wonders what would have happened to Renoir had he not struck up this very nurturing friendship and artistic relationship with this artist. And when he does decide to paint out of doors wholeheartedly, he often stays with Monet at Argenteuil, and it's there that he paints these intimate and casual portraits of Monet's family, Camille, and their son Jean. It wasn't long before Renoir's work was becoming immersed in the aesthetics of the Impressionist movement. Basically, he's already assimilated the techniques we associate with Impressionism, the flickering brushwork, the variegated palette, 
the smallness of the canvas, the letting in of light in a hazy atmosphere. It's already there in this small painting that he does the same year as the eight and a half foot Bois de Bologna. Impressionism came as something of a shock to the Paris art world in 1874 when Monet led a band of renegades who defied the aesthetics of the official government salon. And it's during that summer of 1873 that Monet and Renoir and some of the others decide we will form an independent exhibiting body and we will exhibit ourselves independently of the salon. They do this in the spring of 1874, and this is what comes to be known as the first Impressionist exhibition. That exhibit marked a turning point in French art. 30 painters showed 165 works that directly challenged the Salon. Resistance to the new ideas was plentiful. At least one review used the word madmen. The hostile critics also pointed out the sketchiness and the lack of finish in these paintings, which did not live up to the formal expectations of the Salon aesthetic. Ironically, the name of the movement itself came out of this exhibit, as a critic baptized these rebellious artists the Impressionists, after one of Monet's entries called Impressions of a Sunrise. But not everyone missed the point. A few more progressive critics praised Renoir for his charm and truthfulness. And one even predicted that Monsieur Renoir has a great future. It's important to note that while Renoir had joined his fellow artists in the Impressionist movement and techniques, he still was thinking very much for himself. As he became an Impressionist, Renoir continued to insist upon recreating the world not as it appeared, but as he wished it to appear. Renoir was, by now, clearly an Impressionist. But what precisely is Impressionism? On the simplest level, Impressionist artists were seeking to convey not a realistic representation of a scene, but their impression of a scene. Impressionists were seeking the visual truths of nature attempting to convey brief moments of la vie moderne, contemporary life. They looked to nature and to scenes of modern life for their inspiration, and then translated their impressions of those scenes to the canvas. From a technical perspective, Impressionism is about color and natural light. The Impressionists took us outdoors, where we could see most clearly the fleeting moments of light and form that make up the inherent beauty of life. And unlike his fellow Impressionists, Degas and Manet, whose canvases would allude to the social tensions and ambiguities inherent in modern society, Renoir's art celebrated a joyous and hopeful view of people above all else. In his Impressionist portraits, he accomplished this mission by making pretty girls prettier and by continuing to create a more gentle and beautiful world than the one in which he lived.